I'm so excited to see you. Hi, good to see you too. I haven't seen you since the actual mansion. Oh my gosh, really? Has it been that long? Yeah, for that sure. So Thanks crazy. for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Thank you so much. For those of you listening and can't see her beautiful face, we have Crystal Camden. Yeah. You guys remember her from the show. Um, so, Crystal, just so you know, this is audio and video, okay. so it depends. Like, um, it's it's audio um, for most of the people listening, but if they're part of our Patreon, then they see the video as well, oh, or at cool. least parts of it, whatever. Yeah, so um, not everyone will see. But really um, thank you so you much. What a great thing you guys got going on. I'm glad to be a part of it. I know. Well, I think I've seen you. Well, I've seen you a few times since yes, the last mansion. Yes, for Halloween, remember? Yeah. Oh God, that so that I had a great time at that party. Me too. They actually had one. I didn't make it. Last year, they did another one. I mean, last night, they had their annual tribute. Oh, yeah. I got, in, I got invited to the... Wait. They call it a tribute That's to half. They called it on the flyer. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought it was just a Halloween party. Wait, no, um, the, how come? On the uh, invite, it said it on there. Like right Not above. on mine. Really? This is so okay, weird. Crystal. The new, the new one. After When I get the invite, and I got the one for last night, but I was at Hayride, um, it doesn't say anything about Maybe half on it. they changed it then. So weird. Maybe there's like two. There Maybe two. they send one out to a certain audience and another. That's out what to I another. think is probably what's going on. That would be my guess. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's crazy. You know what? Because, and I was like so surprised when there were so many mansion people last year. Oh, I was I like, know. wow. I know. It's really crazy. <laughs> but it was really fun. I had a great time, and I saw so many people, like staff from the I mansion know. stuff that I hadn't seen in so long. Me too. That was amazing. Oh, I saw pictures of that. I know what you guys are talking about now. Yeah, I um I was Penny Wise, the female version. Yeah, and, that's the like, one. Like DeAndre was mm -hmm. there. I mean, there was just so many people. I can't even begin to start to uh, remember everybody. Plus, I got uh, pretty tipsy that night. <laughs> we were all having a good time. <laughs> As did the rest of the people in my group. I think two people in my group lost their phones oh, no that way. night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one got it back, one didn't. Oh boy. I know. I was like calling the next day going, can we uh, like track down these phones inside the club? Oh my God. Panic. But anyway, that was fun. Crystal, I want to go back like to the very, very beginning. Like I remember the first night we, we met you. I'm pretty sure it was the first night anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we were all at a nightclub called Barfly. Barfly correct. And I want to know, like, because I don't even know if I actually know the answer to this. Like, obviously, um, you're one of the beautiful girls that are at the club, and you come in to say hi to Hef. But, like, how, who were you there with, and how were you able to, like, breach the ropes and come and say hello? Okay, well, that's a funny question. Um, so <laughs> I always, like, admired you guys, and I thought you were so beautiful, like, from the top before when, you know, obviously, you weren't at the mansion before I moved to L.A., but... You know, all the girls in Half Circle and the Playmates and just all, like, the beautiful blondes and brunettes, you know, just all the beautiful girls. And I was always fascinated with that group, that crowd. So I kind of figured out where you guys hung out. So I would show up there, you know. I didn't have any friends at the time, so I would go by myself. I was very oh, daring. And I met... Yeah, no, that's our boring. <laughs> To go to think, a LA nightclub by yourself, that's amazing. I love that. I don't think I would ever do that. <laughs> oh my gosh, maybe I was just, I mean, I've done it. I did it the whole time at the mansion. Sometimes I would go out and just meet people out. It was fun. Um, but I think it was Ron Smith I ran into. He was like, oh, I know Hef. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Do you? And he was like, sure, sure enough. He brought me in. And I don't know if I remember Hef saying this, but he always used to say that's the best thing Rod Smith ever did for him was in introduce him to me. <laughs> oh, my God. That is classic. And I love that. And for you guys listening who don't know, Ron Smith was a friend of Hef's. I think we might have mentioned him in an episode. I think and we like, did. And we called him Grimace because we didn't know, like, what he did. But he was a nice guy. He was a really nice guy. But we never really figured out, like, how he and Hef became friends or how they met or anything. So he's kind of like this mystery character. But he was super nice. And I love that Hef said that. <laughs> that was the best thing ever. <laughs> That's my favorite. Oh my so, like, then what happens? You come in and you meet Hef. And uh, 
what happens from there? Did like have get your number? Yeah, he got my number, and I th- he called me. I think personally the next day, and he says to me, I, "I'll never forget this." He says, "You know, I want to ask you out on a date," and I'm like, "Okay, okay." And you know, I'm like kind of like I'm like 21 years old or whatever, and I'm like talking to Hugh Hefner on the phone, and I'm just in shock. Like I don't even I, I don't even know I comprehended everything he's saying, and he's like. Just so you know, I want you to know that I do have, it was six or seven at the time, I don't remember, other girlfriends, so it's not going to be a really monogamous date in that sense. And I'm like, oh, okay. As if you don't know. He was like, it's not going to be like uh, just you and I. I just want to make sure you, you know that and you're okay with that. And I was like, yeah, and our first date was, um, do you remember when we took the plane to... Um, the Super Bowl in San Diego. Do you remember when we went to San Diego? That was your first? Yeah. I pulled up to the mansion that same day. That's <gasps> crazy. Right before we left. Mm-hmm. It was just like a crazy oh my gosh. to walk into because we had the plane, the private jet, and then we had a police escort. I don't know if you guys remember that. And then we go to this yes. crazy nightclub. I've never been to anything like that in my life. And there's bunnies walking With- around and all the playmates are coming up saying hi and I had barely met you guys. Was this the San Diego yes. Super Bowl that we flew uh-huh. to? And do you remember how packed that so was? Packed. It was overwhelming. Oh my gosh, all the parties that we went to back in those days were packed. Even remember when we started off in Vegas? That was packed too. Yeah. For sure. Okay, so I want to go back just one step because I remember talking about my first phone call from Hef too, and it is so crazy when you get that first I phone call it. from Hef. I never thought it would be him. I thought, oh, sure enough, his assistant's going to call me or his secretary or somebody from the office or one of the other girls I have met or somebody, not him personally. I wasn't expecting Yeah. That. Yeah. And did you answer? Did you see that it was a phone call? I and don't it, know if it said like it necessarily up. the Playboy Mansion, but I know the three one zero two seven three number, and I picked it up, and you know it was him. That's so crazy. So that night um, at the club, did you like stay in in the yeah. circle with yeah, all I was of us? Dancing with you guys. I thought so, but what 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 did you feel like it was like that night? Like, were you like just so excited to be there, or were you like, oh, this is kind of scary Not and stressed out, or there's like tension? I didn't or feel tension. I felt like everyone was super nice. Um, I didn't feel awkward. No one really made me feel awkward. Um, I guess it was just like so surreal. Like it was like, I can't believe this is really happening. Like I'm really like in this it, behind the velvet rope at this point, you know. Yeah, so you felt like everyone was really inviting yeah, I and like nice. That. I never, yeah. That's good. So then you, your first time out, you're going on this <laughs> private jet, and I mean, it's it's not exactly like my my time, but like I was telling at the beginning too, like when I first my, I had my first night out, you know, at the club or whatever. But then the next time, it was like we were going to go be on a, a nighttime talk show, like the very next. Oh my night. gosh! Oh my and, gosh! Yeah, that's intense. And so all of a sudden, yeah, it's like all of a sudden, so it's not quite a private jet, but it's still something like huge. Yeah, you're like on like national TV that's totally, the next day. <laughs> yeah, something that's totally out of, you know, my knowledge base or anything I'm ever, you know, used to doing. So, like, our, I feel like our stories are sort of similar. Where you're, like, thrown kind into, of like, like, the limelight. Yeah, and it's overwhelming but so exciting all at the same time. Yes, yes I felt yeah, the same. Yeah, it's it, it's really crazy. So then eventually um, you move in. How long would you say before you moved in? You know, it was probably about a week or two. I want to say. Was it that fast? It was pretty fast. I want to say he asked me on that Sunday. It was either that Sunday or the following Sunday. Because the Super Bowl is what? Super Bowl so he Sunday. Asked- yeah. So it, was, it would have to be a week later. And then I think I took about a week or so. Maybe it was quicker. I was so excited to be be hanging out with you guys. <laughs> That's crazy fast because we always talk about how everybody's stories are a little bit different. Like it took me a really long time before I moved in Mm -hmm. and then other people like move in really quickly. And then, uh, you know, it's just everyone's got like a totally different story. Yeah. How long it takes. And that's kind of what like everyone. When did you get your bunny necklace? I think that might have taken a little bit of time. Um, I don't quite remember. I remember. I think he forgets sometimes because it was like that for me yeah. too. Like I moved in really fast and then like a week or so went by and I was like, 
wait, I don't have the bunny necklace like everybody else. This feels kind of weird. Like I'm not in the uniform, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I asked one of the other girls, I'm like, oh, Hef hasn't given me a bunny necklace yet. And I thought that she would be, because she'd been kind of friendly so far. And I thought she'd be like, oh, well, you know, you just ask him or he'll, don't worry, you'll get it. Or do you want me to ask him or something? Like I thought she'd say something reassuring, Mm -hmm. but instead she goes, oh, (laughs) he didn't. Oh, no. Well, then he obviously oh. doesn't like you very much. Huh? <laughs> totally. yeah, no, it was totally looking back. I'm like, bitch. Yeah. I think I re- <laughs> But at the time I was like, oh shit. Yeah. You're like nervous. I think mm-hmm. like, maybe you were the one that asked him for me at some point. Holly, maybe. Me? I feel oh, like Holly, yeah. maybe it was. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But I remember not being so concerned that I think my biggest thing was I didn't have like a huge wardrobe like you guys when I first moved in, like the other girls. <laughs> I was like, I have like very little clothes. And remember I was working at Bank of America at the time. So I had a lot of business suits, you know, Mm -hmm. like I was working as, I can't remember. I was like a personal banker at the time. And so I had to be in like pants suits all the time. So I had a lot of those Mm -hmm. and not a lot of kind of clubby clothes. So I felt a lot of pressure to like fit in in that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Because you go out a couple times a week. Oh my god. And Hef has a pretty specific idea of what he likes people to wear. And of course you want to fit in, you know, you're new and everything. So I remember moving in, I had really no clothes either. I kind of had the one outfit I wore out the first night. And when I ended up moving into a bedroom that another playmate had just moved out of, she had left a brand new Playboy brand little black dress in the closet. And I remember being so grateful. (laughs) I was like, thank God, another outfit. Because you do get the clothing allowance, but that takes like at least a week. And then you kind of have to figure out how to ask for that. <laughs> yeah. And then also you have to figure out where to go, what to buy. Cause like you said, you want to fit in. So you want to be wearing something you want to feel a part of, you want to look similar, you know, have a, the similar look as like all the other girls. And, you know, we we're posing in the great hall for that photo before we went out. You don't yeah. want to look oddly out of place, like wearing a gown mm-hmm. when you guys are wearing club clothes, for example, or something like that. But I feel like I can't remember who it was, but I feel like we, I connected with you guys, especially right away. And you kind of like helped me out. Like I remember Holly going to the jewelry store with you. That was a really good memory that you and I have together. That's fun. Yeah. I love Wait. one of my things I spent a lot of time doing when I lived there was just figuring out how to like bargain shop mm-hmm. and get like the best looking stuff for the least amount of money. Because back then, like online shopping, it wasn't what it is today. So it'd be a lot of like, Melrose. I remember Melrose a lot and downtown, to, especially to buy the <laughs> crystals. Yes. Bohemian <laughs> crystal to get Swarovski crystals. Yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh. I think we kept that place in business. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> was that what it was called? Bohemian crystal? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think Bridget, you took me there for my first time, I want to say. Yeah. I was going to ask you, you were talking about a um, jewelry store. Was it the one on Melrose? That one that had all that kind of like inexpensive, like crazy jewelry? No, I do remember that one. But this one I feel like was on Wilshire Boulevard, but kind of in K-Town, right? Um, Or like almost to downtown. I think it was the same jeweler jeweler that designs the bunny necklace. So when you decided to move in, I'm just curious because I feel like everyone has a different reason for wanting to be there Mm -hmm. or um, just was it for what was it for you? Was it that you were really hoping to get Playmate? Were you just like wanting an amazing experience? Were you like looking for a place to stay? Because a lot of people are (laughs) in L.A. Do you (laughs) think you actually had like feelings for F? Like I'm just because everybody's, you know, story is different and reasons for being there are different. So I'm just curious. Yeah, I think like for me, it was all like the fascination with like the whole Playboy lifestyle. Like reading with my family, like we were never allowed to open the magazine, but my dad would get a subscription and we were we would look for the bunny on that cover, you know, every month they would come and we would always open it up. And I was just like always fascinated with Playboy and the lifestyle and the girls and the magazine and everything about it so I was just like really happy to be like a part of that group and like I don't think I was really super happy in my job I don't think that that's what I would would have been in banking in the actual physical branch for my life that's not that wasn't my dream you know but like meeting you guys and getting to be a part of um, Playboy was my dream so it was it's like I could say I lived my dream hundred percent and can relate to which that, is what I, was my yeah, what I wanted since I was a little girl, you know, and I feel like 
I, along with you guys and everything like that, like helped make it happen. How long do you think you'd wanted to do that? Like how old were you when you first decided, like, I love this? Oh my gosh. I had to be really young. I remember in the check stand, um, I said there was a, it was a magazine. I want to say like teen or something. And I was real young and I remember pointing to it and I was like, mom, I want to be like her. And it, it was Christy Turlington on the cover. And I said, I want to be like her when I grow up. And my mom's like, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> oh, we're no. living in what was a small town then, San Jose. I know you're also from Northern California, Bridget, but um, San Jose was a small San town San Jose is not so small not anymore. anymore. It's not so small anymore. People know it. I used to say I'm from San Francisco because nobody knew San Jose. That's wow. funny. So what did you feel like when he was like, yeah, you can move in, but you got to share a room with Bridget? You know, I think, honestly, we had gotten really close during that week because I think we had shared a, a, a room for a couple of nights. And I know yeah. you and I, well, I, really the three of us, we just get along with people, you know? We just don't have, there's never any drama. So I feel like we had kind of gotten close and I think he gave me the option of being in the guest house. But I was like, I don't know if I want to be in the guest house. I kind of have a little bit of FOMO, I guess I always have. And so like, I didn't want to be so far away. <laughs> I wanted to be yeah. next to you. <laughs> well, I feel like we did become close in that time and we wanted to share a room. Yes. Like we were like, no, don't go out to the guest house. Stay in here with me. I, at first like, I'm like, so maybe I fun. did invade her space. I didn't even think about it. But when, given the choice and the moment, um, for some reason, I don't think you were included. I don't know why. But <laughs> you probably should have included in that decision. Um, but it was like, look, oh. Crystal, that's why we're having you on. Because I have a bone to pick. You invaded my space. <laughs> Both oh, of I you guys seem like fun people to share a room with. <laughs> yeah. I thought we had a great time. I thought we, we did so too. I thought so too. Oh my gosh, getting ready for parties. There was so much fun stuff. I have one <laughs> funny one for you. You're going to like this. And I'll show you a photo that I dug up yesterday. But um, I was watching, I can't remember what it was. I was actually talking to another playmate, Audra. I think it was yesterday, a couple days ago. And we were talking about how on the show... There was a time when, I guess she was out of town, we were going to an award show, she said, and you and I were wearing the same color dress. And I walked in and they were <laughs> filming. And they cut, they made it look like you got really upset. And Anna yeah. and I were on the phone and we were like, we were both like, wait a minute, that's not Bridget. She wouldn't, she wouldn't do that. And we realized that, you know, it was made up to, to look like that. It was so funny because yeah. we were like, I was like, I don't remember it happening quite that way. <laughs> right. Well, we talked about that That's on this show because, you know, we're like, take the episodes and pick them apart and like talk about everything that goes on. And I was like, they made it look like I was totally this mad. Was and the, you know what it says? Yes. That's, yeah, AFI awards. Oh, and, you know, they they have me saying to you, go change. Yeah, and it makes it all serious. <laughs> but, you know, I was like, oh, you're wearing the same color as me. Yeah, go change. Or, like, yeah, was, or they picked it from a different t time that night where, or you were joking something like, yeah, they, the way I they was joking it, with you, you were definitely joking. If you even said it in that context at all, or we were it's like funny. laughing about it or something like that. But it, yeah, the way they made it look was really like, and my face, like I was I like, no, <laughs> and then, and then I'm doing my makeup in the mirror and it looks like I stop and, and scowl look, at you you're because you're not a moving. Dirty look. Yeah. And I'm just standing there pouting, like about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable how easy it is for the editors to just take a face and make it look like like your face could be blank but it looks like i'm giving a dirty look if they put it in, in the, the right, right spot. yeah you know what i mean yeah it is funny yeah we totally talked about that and luckily most of the listeners here all have said that they took it as a joke yeah. like they knew i wasn't trying to be bitchy or whatever <laughs> but it i mean I think they learned that after watching, you know, lots of episodes, yeah. not to, if you were just to watch that episode, you'd be like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk about the group because you were there when it was seven mm -hmm. and the dynamics going on. Talk to me about how you felt about everything at that time. Um, I felt, you know, I felt that. It was, for me, overall, pretty good. Like, I felt like most of the people will go with 99 point, whatever that proper ratio is. Um, person of people were really um, nice to me. I didn't really have a problem with anyone except for one person who I thought was a little bit of a bully. 
I can, I feel like I can guess who that sorry, is. Yeah. We do know who it is because we've talked about that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That was a little rough for me, I think, you know, uh, just kind of, um, I don't know. I feel like now I would be just kind of have more of a backbone when it came to that kind of behavior and treatment. But I was a little bit impressionable and young then and just kind of got it's kind of scared, didn't really know where to turn. And I know you guys kind of, I would talk to you about a lot of stuff and things like that, but yeah, the, the attitude, I guess would, was kind of scary at the time with, from this one person. Yeah. I, I feel know. the same way. Like if I could go back in time, I feel like I would have stood up for myself better, but it was also a difficult thing to navigate because you didn't want to like get in trouble with half or make it look like you are the one causing the problem. Yeah. Or, or as the new you know, person the being yeah, like exactly. not wanting to step on anybody's toes. Yeah. Yeah. And like kind of ho hold my own appropriate space. But what is yeah, that, it, you know? So figuring that navigating that, which was easy amongst all of you, everyone else, but uh, co very easy. And everyone was very helpful. Um, with navigating all that and kind of being in a group setting like that and like living amongst, you know, six other young women um, in like close quarters and, you know, being around each other all the time. Um, it was o overall pretty good, except for a couple of times here and there with that unmentioned person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and and with that person too, if I remember right, there was actually some physical reasons to fear her. Oh, yes. Right. I do remember that now that you say it. Yeah. One of my first nights there, I was sitting in the wrong chair, unbeknownst to me, pretty early for dinner one night, and apparently that didn't sit well. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I remember. I got shoved. Because yeah. And I, I mean, I tried to say it on here too, before that, like, I, not only did I feel bullied and like, um, I, I was like scared of these people and stuff or that, and especially that one in particular, but I actually felt like sometimes scared to walk out of my room and down the hall that like for my physical safety. There was a lot of like, uh, like avoidance. I feel like for me, just trying to avoid that person and just any contact or like running into mm -hmm. just because it was always for me awkward, not necessarily like physical, but just like always uncomfortable for me. Yeah. And I feel like if it was now, things might be a little bit different. Like might be able to have have like a conversation or get my you know my point across that I don't understand what's happening and why this is like this retaliation is going on or whatever is happening. Um, but you know, back then it was uh, different. I you know I was a lot younger. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, why do you think there was so much drama with that one person? That's what I never could figure out. What would you say, if somebody asked you, what was it like living at the mansion? How do you describe it? I think what overall, like for me, um, I feel like for me, I would say the way I describe it usually to people is kind of like a family situation. Like the family dinners, like the dinners and things where we would come down in our pajamas and just casual, like was really meaningful to me. Like it meant a lot to just feel like natural with no makeup and, you know, in our pajamas and just walk around like so casual, like, and feel like, you know, safe to do that. And like, you weren't, you didn't have to be glammed up all the time and you weren't expected to uphold this like idea of what other people had of, you know, being at the Playboy Mansion with glammed up girls in lingerie doing pillow fights all the time. That's not what, it, that's not what my experience was. Um, wait, what about our room? We were always glammed up having pillow fights. Oh yeah. <laughs> Feathers flying everywhere, you yeah. know, <laughs> little, little oil here and there. Like yeah. Just, bras and <laughs> kidding, <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. <laughs> Jumping on the bed. <laughs> mm -hmm. So funny. What would you say was your favorite moment living at the mansion? Oh gosh. I have so many. Um, I think that watching that, that tape and watching like the, the show unfold the way it did was a good memory. Like, so I feel like I really enjoyed our travels together. Like that experience, like going to um, Disney world and 
so many. And the Queen Mary, that was fun too. Oh my gosh. When we went down in that swimming pool, was it? The drained swimming yeah. pool. That was so fun. Yeah. And kind of wandering the halls and you trying to spook us out. <laughs> No, I would never do that. <laughs> that was so fun. And you like explaining every little nook to the of the Queen Mary. That was really awesome. Like there was like the travels really. And do you remember, I don't know if you saved my life, Bridget. Um, we were in Florida and we had just walked in the room and oh, there was yes. champagne there. Oh my God. I, I remember had that. never opened champagne before. So I'm twisting it and I'm like, how does this thing open? I have a bottle like this pointed at my face. Bridget, look at me. You have it like me. in your lap and you're looking <laughs> down at it and I can see it in slow motion <laughs> lifting the cork is is coming out. She runs and screams and I'm like, huh? I look at her and she grabs oh, no. it away, pulls the bottle away from my face and it bursts open. Do you yeah, remember the cork scary. hit the light and broke yes. the light? And Hef yes. came running in and he was like, what in the world is going on here? I think you were right behind him, Holly. And um, he says, what in the world? Because you could hear the, you know, the, the ball burst in the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was going to be my nose. <laughs> yeah. Or your eye. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, because there was screaming and then the cork burst. And then, and then, the then light there was the glass. light shattering. And then <laughs> it was just chaos for a minute. Yeah. And then Hef running in and everyone was screaming. And I was just like. Oh my gosh, that almost just, this trip would have ended very differently had you not been there. There would have been a hospital visit. Oh man, that would have been disastrous. <laughs> and that's so weird too, because Crystal, I literally saw the cork moving in slow motion in my mind. I just was seeing it oh. like not even inch, but like, like little millimeters coming out of the bottle. And I just went as fast as yeah, I could and like ran. just pushed it. And you grabbed like, it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was, yes. That was a close I definitely, call. You might look different still today. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure that yeah. thing, it shot up and broke the light. You know, it was funny because nobody, Hef wasn't even mad. He was just like, glad you're okay. That would have definitely been a disaster. Oh my God. A hospital visit. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and and god forbid we we uh mess up have schedule because we were always on a <laughs> oh minute to schedule. minute minute to minute <laughs> yeah there was no time for the hospital no Crystal. definitely not <laughs> hospital on the maybe plane for, yeah maybe for oh that just reminded me we used to i forgot we used to travel with a doctor on the really do you remember that holly i don't wait was it every you guys Maybe I we think did. So. Well, no, I would definitely remember even when we went to Vegas, there was a doctor because I remember I got, um, and this was weird. I got some weird allergic reaction when we went to Vegas. Like, I don't even know what happened, but my eyes all puffed up. Like, I vaguely almost remember that shut. as well. And there was, and they said, have the doctor look at her. And, and it was one of the guys that I thought was just security, but he was actually a doctor and he opened up a briefcase and he had like everything you could need for like emergency situations. And he like gave me a shot in the arm of like some, um, like uh, allergy yeah. medication or something. And it hurt so bad. And I remember the whole rest of the trip, my, I could barely move my arm. Oh no. <laughs> I was so sore. And then I couldn't see out my eyes. I wore these sun, giant sunglasses. Oh, no. oh my gosh. I have a picture of you that I, uh, that I saw a couple of days ago as well. I remember that you were wearing a gold dress and the sunglasses. Yeah. Yes. And the sunglasses worked because it was very 60s. Yeah. Like, and it and worked I, well I with the gold dress. Yeah, I actually like those pictures and stuff, but the reason I'm wearing them is because I'm just like, so, like my eyes are practically swollen shut. It's weird. Oh no. It was, I wonder it what was you weird. Ate. I have no idea. And I think it happened one other time, either before that or after that, but I've never had it happen again. Weird. So I, I don't know. Um, what would you say was the weirdest thing or the, like, <laughs> Crazy. It doesn't have to be a negative, but or if it is a negative, whatever. But like, just um, like the weirdest or most awkward, Ooh, or I was trying to think of what that would be. Weird and awkward. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. You could think about it. And we can come back to it later. Yeah, I want to hear what you. What did you answer? How did you answer that question? What was weird? Oh, and I think awkward? I just thought so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. There had to have been, right? Oh, gosh. Um, 
I remember getting just off the top of my head, going to the club and getting, getting, uh, getting, getting attacked to, to join this, like gr- uh, the girls were trying to sneak away from security. And I was like, wait, wait, oh, all of a sudden everybody was gone. The girls are running off this way and security's so confused. And they're like, where is everybody? I'm like, I don't know what just happened. But there was oh a time God. where as the, you know, we would go like water the club or walk around or whatever. And um, they don't, we're always trying to ditch security for whatever reason. I don't know what they were. <laughs> it was just like escape the parents kind of thing. Yeah. To meet guys. Well, oh, that's what it was. <laughs> You know what I saw once? This is so weird. I saw that this was one of my first nights out with the group when I was brand new, had just moved in. And there was uh, one of the security guys. He was like a younger, shorter guy. I forget his name. But he was walking one of Hef's girlfriends to the bathroom, and they full on like did a slow, (laughs) open mouth kiss on the way to the bathroom. It was so weird. And this guy like continued to work with Hef. I don't think he ever found out about it. Oh my god! I'm in shock Me right too. now. I did not yeah. know this, and I want to so know. Weird. I do too. But it was the weirdest thing because she's like walking to the bathroom with security, and then she holds <laughs> his hand, and then they lean in and do like an open mouth, like romantic kiss, and then like their eyes lock. Oh my god! She walks in the bathroom. It was so weird. I wanted to talk, speaking of your um, awkward situation where the girls like were ditching security and stuff. I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the dynamics of the group because I feel like. Um, we would, and we would always talk about this while you're there and stuff. You always tried to walk the line. Like Holly and I were like, okay, we would call them the mean girls, yeah. but you were always like the walking middle. the line yeah. yeah, and trying to be friends with everybody, which <laughs> didn't work with everybody as we clearly yeah. established, but like you would try to like, but tell me what that was like, like well, I doing don't know. that. I guess I've always been kind of a people pleaser. That's like both a, you know, flaw and kind of a good thing, I think, at this point in my life. But, um, you know, I, I just most comfortable with being friends with everyone and like not necessarily changing who I was or my personality to appease people, but just I was always more comfortable, like feeling like I was accepted by everyone. Um so, I mean, it pretty much worked well, I think. I mean, I wasn't in, you know, the, I, was, I, I can only speak from my personal experience. So I don't know what people said or thought about my situation and being in that role. Like going from like the mean girls to you guys and kind of like being kind of non-biased um, in the, the like click kind of situation. Except for minus that one person we discussed. <laughs> um, but uh I don't know. I didn't, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like I was forced to choose a a certain side or group of people, you know, in a forceful way of any measure. I felt like I was able to maintain friendships with everyone. I always end up being much closer to you guys. Yeah. Well, I feel like there were times that you would, um, talk to me and stuff about feeling like torn, like you were afraid to do certain things or they might get mad or. I suppose. Yeah. I guess there was times when I felt like you always understood. And I kind of made it clear to other people as well that like, I'm never going to, you can't put me in a position to choose not to be friends with somebody that I feel connection with. You know, I made that very clear. Yeah. Because that's just not who I am. Yeah. Um, so at some point, and it wasn't, you didn't stay that long as a girlfriend. How long were you a girlfriend? It was, about, it was a year. I want to say a solid year, maybe a little more. I'm not a hundred percent sure. A little less, wow. somewhere around that frame, time frame. Yeah. So what made you decide this isn't for me? Well, you know, honestly, I feel like if I'm going to be completely honest, and I remember Mary, you know, making it clear that she was kind of aware of the same situation. The bullying really has started to affect me. Yeah. You know, if I, you know, I don't want to give that certain person too much power, but at that time in my life, it was really negatively affecting me. And, um, I think the, the, the fact that nothing was being done about it, um, you know, it makes me wonder how that person had so much power and why nothing was ever said. Cause if I was not the only one receiving this sort of treatment, but you know, you can't change it. And Nobody seemed to know what the right thing to do was because it seemed like a lot of people knew what was going on. 
you could, nothing could be done. Like if I would have went to half and been like, hey, she's really mean, he would have been mad at me because like I'm causing the problem just by bringing it up. And it was hard and it was weird. Like I would have understand it more if Hef was like super into her and yeah. thought she was like hot shit, but that wasn't even the case. And she kind of glommed on to this other girl that Hef liked and found her place there. And it was almost like she was safe because nobody could really stand up for themselves. It was just so weird. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, and I wonder why the, the other girls didn't like mention something. I know that it was told to me that they had at some point, but nothing's changed, you know? So, yeah, I think she was just safe because she was like glommed on to the other girl mm -hmm. and the other girl didn't have bad experiences with her because the bully was like in love with yes, the other girl yes. and like worshiped her. Mm -hmm. And then that girl kind of had power because Hef liked her. So she's kind of safe in that way. Get it. Yep. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. But Crystal, you said you talked to Mary about it and Mary like knew that yeah, this girl she was said, trouble, but just was like, if you don't like it, you have to leave. No, that's not even how it happened. It happened a long time after I had left. And she goes, you know, one day we were sitting in her office and she said to me, I know the real reason you left. And I was like, oh, um, you know, it kind of became, it became like a really kind of a big thing. But my, my, that situation, my situation with that person, because as you know, when I moved out, I still stayed really close to Hef and to you guys. Really, really yeah. close. And we did not want you to leave. We did no. not want you to leave. We were super bummed that you were leaving. Yeah, I mean, so I feel like... it was rough. I feel like I did move out physically, but I never really kind of really never left. You know, yeah. I was renting a room in San Diego, but I came up and stayed a lot of nights with you, Bridget. You know, mm -hmm. and we would hang out and we would either go to the parties or go out or, you know, whatever. Um... I just felt like if I had that little bit of like independence, I would have a little more um, comfort in coming around, but not, I don't know. I, I, it didn't really work out as I had thought. And there was one party. It was not a Playboy party. It was, I want to say a karma party and security had come up to me and um, security had come up to me along with, was it not Joyce? was one of the secretaries and she said, this person's on the property. Do you want her? We can ask her to leave. Cause you know, she's not supposed to be here. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm not, no, don't, don't ask her to leave. I don't care if something, because if there, if there becomes a problem, which I don't anticipate, yes, I'll let you know. But otherwise, no, I don't care. You know, that this person's here, you know, I'm not, I didn't really care. So, but the, I thought that was pretty, that was like a change, you know, from what we had talked about before to the action that had taken place that night with security saying, do you want, do you want us to remove her? But you know what? I think they were Fresh. escorted out and the video, cause uh -huh. you know how Hef had the, somebody videoing the whole party, the yeah. video camera like oh. followed them <laughs> out. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't remember that. I was probably off doing my own thing at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think we only found out about it later because we like watched the video. So, um, I, I was going to ask you next, like, why did you sort of come back? Because eventually you did, uh, kind of move back in, not into the mansion and not as a girlfriend, but you moved over to the bunny house. Tell me about how that came to be. Well, I was, tra I was coming back and forth because I was still going out with you guys a lot and I was still doing a lot of modeling in LA. So I was like, constantly in LA. And I think that's when I correct me if I'm wrong, Holly, but you had suggested to us to open the bunny house up for girls that yeah, you we guys both wanted to did. hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we wanted like guys... a nice place to live for girls we thought were fun and no yeah. obligation to them other than just show up to a party or two. Yeah. And have dinner yeah. with you guys and hang out. Yeah. And, I mean, I had a lot of fun there and coming back and forth and hanging out with you guys and being a part of the show with you and you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was great. I, I feel like I never really left for that whole period of time. I mean, yeah, that was my physical mailing address for whatever period of time until you guys opened the, um, the playmate house. But you know, I was, I feel like I was there a lot. And when I moved into the playmate house, it was just, I just felt so at home. I had, you know, I took the orange cat over there, you know, it's like, that's right. <laughs> Yeller. 
That's, I forgot oh, about yeah. Yeller. We've yeah. never talked about, so Yeller was like a cat that just kind of roamed the mansion grounds, He's, right? And he'd hang out with security. Mm-hmm. He, they think That's they, so cute. They think he was dropped off there because whoever had him couldn't take care of him and that they knew he would have uh-huh. like a safe, a safe home at the mansion because he'd be taken care of and fed and things. Oh and my he gosh. was, but then Crystal took him over. I took him extra special <laughs> at my house. <laughs> at my house. That's so yeah. cute. In my room. But that guy was crazy, in and out all the time. He was fighting raccoons off. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's great. <laughs> he was, he was. Wow. Was it better? Would you say it was better being a non girlfriend? You know what? I don't think necessarily. I think to. Not to like replay this tape, but I think it was once that one person was no longer a part of the scene, it, a lot of things changed for me. Yeah. A lot of things, yeah. the dynamics changed a lot, in my opinion. Or uh, for uh, me, yes. It changed for me too, all of us. Yeah. Like we've night talked day. about. Yeah. Night and day. <laughs> like we've talked about how we had to have a party <laughs> when when that was all that whole thing was over yeah like, yeah when they got kicked out we went into each of their rooms and took a picture just to like know it was real because <laughs> we were in disbelief because for because they'd been there for like well over a year and we thought they were never gonna leave and it was just such a relief when they were finally kicked out That's they'd funny. been there pushing two years yeah, yeah. they were there before i got there and long after mm-hmm. but seriously it felt like 10 years <laughs> 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, for like, like 10 thought, years for me. I was only there for like a year. Yeah. I thought this is never going to end. <laughs> um, how did you feel like when the girls next door started shooting and all that started happening? It was another thing where I just didn't like realize what was happening at the time. Like it, I feel like everything from like moving into how I got asked to go in to like starting the show to like every, moving out, having to tell half that. I was leaving all that. And you guys too. I remember Holly, I told you the night before and it was just like so emotional. Um, but that was another thing where it's like, I, at the time I didn't realize the magnitude of what was going on and like how that would change, like, like your guys' lives so much, you know, and like, just like really shape like the lives of like all of us and change mm-hmm. so much for playboy but also for you guys as well i don't think any of us realized how much effect it would have on our lives but it was kind of crazy yeah. having just cameras following you around all over the place and i remember you know i don't know if you guys had a lot of um like warning when they would come and film but you know when they would come over to to the playmate house and they were like we're waking you guys up in the morning we'd always we'd all get around sit around and talk about oh are you going to sleep with your makeup on are you going to sleep? you know <laughs> that's so <laughs> funny fun oh my god <laughs> and then they never ended that... up coming. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! So funny. Do you think that a lot of people recognize you from the show? Not anymore. A little bit in the in... well, because you're you got dark That's hair true. now. So I have dark hair. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I don't go out as much as I used to. But um, once in a while, once in a while, it kind of feels weird. Yeah. Um. Would you say? that it helped you in any way or hindered you in any way or just neither the show or being there well I, my question was the show but i'm curious about being there too the show not as much i think for you as for you guys being that you were like the stars of the show and it really changed your lives um not as much but being there for sure being there just in general and having the relationships and the long term relationships that i've developed while there with like Hef and Mary and you guys. And I mean, look how many years later and here we are talking like we were just there yesterday and with some yeah. of the other playmates as well, like just those friendships and those relationships and just really like transformed me into like who I am. That's for sure. That had like a huge, I mean, we were a part of that for a long time, you know? Yeah. Um, and just being a part of all of that really shaped who I am. That's for sure. Yeah. And like the influence is there and, and in you guys and the staff and, you know, people like Mary, who I got to be really close with. And that totally changed my life for sure. Just seeing things from like different from how I grew up in San Jose, you know, just like a whole different perspective on life and a whole different like lifestyle and just opened my eyes to so many things. Yeah. Like, what are you- Oh, go ahead. Like, for example, like one thing, like, having this heart that I do for like special needs animals. Like I didn't grow up with animals. We didn't have dogs and cats and 
you know, birds and things like that. We weren't like a huge, my parents are more like old school, you know, they're not like, we didn't have animals in our home, a few cats here and there, but you know, not like dogs and the compassion for dogs and seeing the, the dog lovers and the animal lovers and the, you know, especially you, Holly, um, all that kind of stuff. Like that was different for me and like taught me a lot about who I want to be. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. What would you say your relationship was like with Mary or how would you describe Mary to people? Because people have mixed feelings about Mary and I I loved Mary. This is my little, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's a Mary oh, trip. Yes. adorable. It's oh mostly f- like little photos of her from like her, mm-hmm. um, like her service handbook or booklet thing. And I put it in a little frame. Um, she was kind of like a mother figure to me. Like I ha- almost had like, there was a bedroom with in, in our home that, you know, that I would stay at from time to time. And I would help her like with Thanksgiving. And, you know, when she wasn't seeing very well, I would go into her office and read her and like drive her home and things like that. So we got really close. Aww. Actually, I have her that's name so awesome. tattooed on my arm. <laughs> oh, that's so wow, pretty. Wow, that's really, really close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the end, mm-hmm. we got really close. I was next to her Aww. when she passed. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that because I'm glad to know that somebody who really cared about her was there because yeah. I was worried. Because as, you know, if people don't know, like her partner, Captain Bob, passed mm-hmm. away before she did. And I remember when Mary was in the hospital, like I was about ready to give birth and I was in Las Vegas, so I couldn't be yeah. there. And I didn't know who was there because Bridget, you and Ashley tried to be there. I tried really? to go. No way. I wasn't allowed to go see her. Oh my gosh. Yeah. A certain somebody said no. Yeah. I got, um, when I was called from one of Mary's friends and said, you know, time to come, you have to come to the hospital. It was actually one of the playmates. I was, um, I was co-hosting a um baby shower for I think it was it was one of the playmates I think it was Jamie and that very day we were getting ready like putting out all the alcohol and like getting the food ready and stuff like that for the um for the baby shower and uh I got a call and said you know you come down to she she wants you here now and I knew what that meant and I had kind of um broke down like kind of crying and I remember exactly where I was I was in the laundry room and one of the girls from the main house come out came over and said can I drive you because I was not clearly wasn't in a good space to be driving over the hill because she was a bit um she was in she was over she was in the valley um in the hospital at the time and you know I kind of got in trouble for (laughs) for like allowing this person to drive me and I was like oh that's a little weird because I was not in a good state to, to be driving, but that was my experience with, with that. So I can imagine, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ashley and I tried to go and visit and, um, actually Brian Olea called me and said, I think you should go visit Mm -hmm. her. You know, you should. And I said, I want to like, tell me where she's at. And then, um, and then no, Mm. wasn't allowed. Which is still, I'm like, I have a big problem with that still. Yeah, I can imagine. And the same thing happened to me with Hef. Like, they wouldn't let me come and say goodbye to him. Wow. For a long time. Mm. Like, before he was really sick, even. And so, um, yeah, I have a lot of issues and a lot of problems with that. And we're going to get into that at some point. Yeah, we definitely should. Sure. Um, yeah, I, yeah. So, tell me, how long did you live at the Bunny House total? <sighs> oh, I had to be like 10 years. Nine years, maybe including the year, maybe including the year that I was at at the main house with you guys too. It was about total of nine, 10 years. I'm going to say, is there a long time? Overstayed my welcome. Yeah. (laughs) No, you did not. Everybody wanted you there. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So you have to tell us, Crystal. Okay. We get so many like stories about what life was like after we left and stuff. Tell us what it was like there after we left. Oh, after you guys left, it was, you know what? Well, the show didn't really do as well when you guys weren't there. So it got canceled pretty quickly, as you know, but I think the bigger change for me obviously was when other people left. Um, it was like, uh, it all happened again so fast. It feels like for me, for me, it was happened so fast. And it was just like, you guys to a different group. And it was, I don't think I was 
as close to the new group as I was too. So I wasn't there as often. I didn't spend time like in other people's rooms. I wasn't upstairs hanging out in rooms, having drinks, getting ready for parties, that kind of thing. That all changed. I would get ready more with the girls at the Playmate house and I became closer to them. And it kind of morphed into kind of a closer bond with the girls that were at the house and we would stay up. And so I spent a lot more time at the, the bunny house than I did at the main house you know, yeah. towards those days when the relationships at the, you know, the bunny house grew closer and we would do puzzles and drink wine, like simple stuff. We'd rent movies and, you know, we've always went over to the house for um, dinner and a movie, but then we'd go back to the house, hang out, figure out what we we're going to do. If we were going to go out or just hang, just do a puzzle or, you know, whatever we, we kind of, kind of became more of that. Yeah. Was Hess still going out to the clubs and stuff? Not as much, no. I want to say not, not so much. Yeah. Because I've just heard so many stories about how things pre- changed pretty drastically after we left. Yeah. And, but then you never know. You know, you, are these people just saying that because, you know, they're trying to be nice or do they really mean it? Like things change. Like it just wasn't the same after we were It gone. wasn't the same. It definitely, I don't mean like we were super wild or anything, but it definitely was a total opposite. Like we didn't go out. There was not as much partying. There was not, there was no, like really, no one really drank anymore. It was just kind of really mellow. Yeah. Kind of quiet. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) So were you there till like the very Mm -hmm. end or at some point? Okay, so you didn't need, because I know a lot of people, and this is so sad, but a lot of people that were really close with Hef, and it, for many, many years, were taken off the list yes. towards the end. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were not admitted on the property mm-hmm. anymore, but you you got to stay. I was still like, living there. I was living there until we literally were kicked out when Hef sold the house. And we were told, okay, well, you have, what was it, three months, and then three months turned into six, and then... You know, it just, it, I don't necessarily know if it took a while to sell or if he hadn't listed it right away or what the situation was, but we stayed up almost a year until when they said they were putting it on the market. Had to be a good nine okay, months. So, but, but they put it on the market and they sold it, uh, while Hef was still alive. Yes. yes. But, um, were you, did you, were you there up until Hef passed away? I wasn't living there. But I would go there to play cards and to have dinners and to go to the parties. I mean, there weren't, yeah, I guess there was a couple of parties towards the end, but. There was a couple, but they were more put on by Cooper because I went to a couple of them. Okay, maybe, yes, yes. Those. Sorry, I don't mean to start laughing, but I was just thinking of the Christmas post. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that was weird. Crystal, this is so dumb. Everybody's going to be like, why is Holly on this fucking tangent? But I remember, like, in his later days, I don't know why this came to my attention, but sometimes, like, there would be a party, and, like, somebody would point out that Cooper would post a picture of him and have, like, oh, we had a great time at the party last night, but the picture was really from, like, a year earlier. <laughs> it was, like, the, there was so much disconnect with the social media. And then a picture was posted on Hep's Instagram, and it was as if you were standing outside the mansion door looking in through that little glass window of the door, and there's a wreath around it, and you see this creepy life-size statue of Santa <laughs> inside the window, and it says, it's beginning to look alive like Christmas at the bottom. And I just remember thinking, Hef didn't post that. Like, I know he didn't post that. And for some reason, I don't know why, but it makes me laugh so hard. And I even made like a TikTok about it that I never posted. And I'll send it to Bridget on random days because it just makes me laugh. I so want to see know. this. No, I know he didn't post that. It drives me off. Well, there's something eerie and creepy. In and that. whose Instagram is it on? It was on oh, really? but I just, oh, so no, funny. he didn't post it. And I don't know why, but it makes me laugh so hard. So I I was so behind when it came to like Instagram and stuff. Um, so he had his own Instagram and who had access to this? Like who was posting and on what platform? I think, Obviously it wasn't a cell phone. Well, I think Crystal had oh, access right. to okay. his Instagram, but I don't know. Other people might have too. Because I feel like just from what I observed or what people pointed out, I feel like Cooper was posting mm-hmm. stuff too that made it look like he Hef was a little more up and about than he was. 
which is fine. That's their business. But I don't know why, just like the Christmas post <laughs> was so weird. It was just such a weird disconnect. Like it didn't make sense. I always sense. thought there was, yeah, I always thought it was just sort of creepy, like sort of eerie. I have to see like, this post. I don't know. I'm texting Bridget right now. Start a group chat so I can send the TikTok. It'll take me a while to find because I made it a while back. Okay. So it's so dumb. Nobody else will think this is funny. It's just a private joke I have with myself, but I can't stop. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of the stuff that we did together with Hef. Like we didn't do a lot of traveling. Um, There wasn't a whole lot of that going on at that point anymore. Um, There was no show. So we weren't doing like outings and things. Um, we didn't go to dinners much, maybe for birthdays. Things really did change now that, now that I think about it. A lot of stuff I've been noticing is like kind of in retrospect, like things just were so, you know, grandiose and like looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, that I, I can't believe I didn't feel more some type of way with, you know, like the first date going on a private jet, you know, things like that. And like, the show having cameras in your face in the early morning or just, you know, never knowing what, what's going to happen with that. And just kind of, um, well, it's so overwhelming. Yeah. And when you're in the moment, like you're just, you're just, it's like fight or flight. You're just going and, and not in a bad way. Not like it's horrible things happening, like in a good way, but you're just trying to cope and do the best you can because here you are in this like crazy, amazing situation and you want to do well and you want to, you know, you want to shine. Mm-hmm. And so I just feel like it gets overwhelming and you just become focused on doing the best you can at that moment. Yeah. But it's hard to like feel the moment Yeah, when you're doing and that. And I feel like a lot more of the memories, maybe because they were so much more like powerful were when you guys were there versus afterwards because there wasn't a lot of that traveling. There wasn't a lot of those like, we didn't watch, you know, like we watched, I think it was like the bachelor or something like that in the room. And like, a lot, like the girls from a playmate house would come over and we would all hang out and we didn't do stuff like that anymore. It wasn't as yeah. family ish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sad talk. Where were you when Hef died? I was in Vegas. I had seen him a couple of days before. So, um, I feel really grateful. I'm sorry that you didn't have, that's really, I'm, that is really a bummer. I didn't know that. Um, I'm sure something that I could have done. Um, but I did get to say goodbye a couple of days before. So I'm just so grateful of, for that, um, for being able Mm -hmm. to say goodbye and see him a couple of days before. Um, you know, did you know it was coming? I mean, you know, you never prepared for it and I knew that I never was going to be. But, um, at first, cause at, so at, there was a few times where I had gotten calls and it was rumors and I knew they were rumors because I had seen him either that day or within a couple of days and he was in good shape. So I assumed they were rumors. And this time I did as well, because that's what I wanted to assume. That's where my, my head just went automatically that this has to be some sort of rumor call crystal. I need confirmation. Um, but you know, I did kind of know. Yeah. It wasn't, it, I wasn't as convinced that it was a rumor as I had been in the past. We'll just say that. Yeah. Because I had seen him two days before. Were you invited to Hess funeral? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get invited to that either. Sorry. Yeah. And I wish there was something I could have done. And you know what? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that there is no way that Hef wouldn't have wanted no, to No, no. All three of us. Correct. No matter yes. what. Yes. But I think unfortunately at that time, there wasn't another, enough people like Mary um, to intervene on your guys' yeah. behalf. And there I had nobody. no idea. I don't know what I could have done. Honestly, there was some powerful forces, obviously, as you know, in um, next to him at that time. <laughs> but um, yeah. Well, I confronted mm, one of them. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I've a, I've a little I've a little list of people <laughs> who I know prevented me from saying goodbye to Mary, saying goodbye to Hef and not inviting me to the funeral. And they're not okay on my list. Yeah, of course. So. Of course. You would imagine. Yeah, Mary was like a huge advocate for him and, you know, when she was not around anymore, a lot of things changed. A lot. Yeah. 
you know, I think that's when the guest list started changing and the parties started changing. Um, There was a lot of Mm -hmm. changes afterwards. And it's sad because, like I mentioned before, a lot of his really close friends, Mm -hmm. people who, you know, have spent 20 years, more, even more, hanging out there and being by have side and stuff were no longer all of a sudden just like not allowed Mm -hmm. up there anymore. Mm -hmm. And for no real reasons that they were given. Mm -hmm. Yep. I do remember that. It is very sad. Yep. Have you been to the grave site? Yes. I used to go regularly, especially on Halloween. I used to bring things like this, what I showed you earlier, stuff like this. I would leave on his, I don't know if it's talking now. (laughs) She's supposed to talk, but, um, I would leave like little things there sometimes. I would go there and like bring stuff and just kind of hang out. There's a couple of times yeah. I was uh, not, you know, I was struggling and I would go and like sit and hug. So like I would have lunch with him or something. And I brought my dog a bunch of times, lucky, because he had been to the mansion a bunch of times. I've had met him. And um, it wasn't until much later I realized there were signs everywhere that said no dogs allowed. It's always weird going there too, because since he's next to Marilyn Monroe, there's a lot of, and there's a lot of famous people and it's a tourist stop, that cemetery. Uh, So um, I'll be sitting there like, you know, having a moment and there's like people taking photos from like the Midwest all around me. You can hear their accents (laughs) and they're like just very confused why this girl's sitting there in tears and and like, (laughs) oh gosh. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you kind of led me into the next question. I was wondering if you still talk to people from the mansion. I do. I do. I still talk to a lot of the staff. Um, I still talk to a lot of the girls. Who, who from the staff do you talk to? I actually to? talked to DeAndre yesterday. I knew his name came up earlier. Okay. I talked to Kia as well. Um, I love her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Carlina. She texted me a couple of days Good. ago. Um, let's see. Who else? Um Kim. Brian? Yes, Brian okay. and Kim and a lot of the security. Um, and I talked to some of the playmates as well. I keep in touch with a handful of them. Um, Who do you talk to most? Audra, no, yeah. I, and Audra mm-hmm. I talked mm-hmm. to Audra. I talked to a girl, Melissa. I don't know if you guys remember Melissa Dawn. Is she, does she throw those Halloween parties? She co-hosts with about? her husband, yeah. Mm-hmm. So her and I are close. I, have a, I don't Okay. What were you going to say? No, never mind. Never mind. I can tell you. Never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> so her, I talked to Carrie Stevens. Who else? There's a handful of people. I talked to Stacy Burke. Yes, there, yeah. Love Stacey. Um, we're going to have Stacy on the show. Oh, good. Too. Yeah. I texted her. She had texted me and I texted her yesterday and said, are you going to come to the Halloween thing? And she was like, yeah, I got five jobs. And I was like, yeah, girl, I don't know how she does it. <laughs> <laughs> and a new boyfriend. Oh, I didn't know that was real. Ooh. It's oh, real. my gosh. Okay. That was what the text was about. So I got to congratulate her on that. Wow. Exciting. Oh, my goodness. Remember yeah. her wedding? That was a crazy. Yes. That was You guys so threw fun. a crazy bachelorette party penises mm-hmm. everywhere. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> what she would do? Yeah. We should have. Yeah, you guys have to have her on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i'm excited to rewatch that episode because so that bad. wedding episode is wild <laughs> it was so and I'm, i don't remember how much made it on camp oh my gosh enough i think i hope they got the part where they were questioned if they were like sober enough to like go through with this <laughs> oh, that's right. I that's right. You. that was too funny i'm sure she wouldn't mind me <laughs> saying that Okay, I just have a couple more questions. No, she would not no, care. No, I don't think so. She's, she's proud of that. Oh, yeah. Um, she's fantastic. Just a few more questions for you. Um, do you keep in touch with any of the old girlfriends? From our time? No. I've reached out, haven't heard back. Um, tried to locate a couple of them. That wasn't, didn't get anywhere. Oh, Renee. Yes. Yes. I. She was got. She was also really close to Mary. Um, so we would play cards together. We don't like talk regularly, but we did have a relationship up until when I, you know, Mary passed. Yeah. Renee went on a rant about me on Facebook recently. She must be doing that a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's a thing. 
<laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> but um, yeah, I haven't, I don't, I don't go on Facebook much. Oh, but Holly, I wanted to show you this. Do you remember? I have like this little cutout in my apartment and I put little uh-huh. like, knickknacks and things like memories and stuff. And I don't know if you remember this, but it's on there. Yes. Aww. I gave the same one to my Did daughter you? too. Oh my it's gosh. so cute. How yeah. The... Cause her middle name's Aurora. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. I love those. Yeah, her in the blue. Is it like a little music box? Yeah, it's a little music box, but she gave it to me specifically because my favorite color is blue, and we were always trying to figure out if her original dress was blue or pink. Mm -hmm. Well, it changes colors, doesn't it? It changes colors, but we were trying to figure out. It changes colors. Yeah, but she used to be marketed in blue. Like, she was always blue. And then maybe around the year 2000, when they started doing more Disney princess merchandise, they always put her in a pink dress because there wasn't a princess in a pink dress. But they redesigned the princesses really recently. They had a big cutout in downtown Disney, and they put instead Ariel in, like, her dinner pink dress, and Aurora is back in her blue dress. Oh, my gosh. Cool. Yeah. So it switches up. Nice. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So tell everybody what you're up to now. Well, um, I'm still modeling, which is really cool. I feel blessed for that because um, it's, you know, obviously, like I said earlier, that's what I wanted to do since I was a little girl. So I'm lucky. I have my OnlyFans. Um, and I did a really cool um, bikini shoot that I just posted last night this week on um, out in Malibu. Uh, I posted on my Instagram y- yesterday. Um, so that's been really fun. That's been cool. I'm like super happy about that. Like I said, I'm getting involved with uh, special needs animals. I'm thinking about opening up a sanctuary at some point, maybe when I retire uh-huh. from modeling, um, something small to start. Um, yeah. cause I've always seemed to have like special needs animals always seem to come into my life. Like I've had deaf cats and I think I have one tattooed on my, on my foot, a deaf the, a cat that I had that was deaf and, you know, poor little, I'm not so homeless yeller, but I took him in, you know, and he was a mm-hmm. wild one. Um, and now I have a blind dog who I medicate twice a day and, you know, that kind of thing. So kind of, I want to get involved with something more involved and I've been looking into fostering. So I'm going to start that coming up pretty soon. Um, yeah, kind of that kind of thing. Well, speaking so awesome. of that stuff, do you know uh, what happened to all the animals at the mansion? You know what? I know some of the staff took them. I know some of the staff that were like allowed to take whatever birds were legal to be like kept in homes or whatever took them. So I know there was a little bit of that. Um, But I think some of them did go to sanctuaries, but I don't think they're not on the property anymore from what I know. I don't think so. I thought they were. I don't think so. Oh my God, your heart is broken. I could be wrong. I I could be wrong. But I know there's a lot of, I think he's getting married or just got married. Or was that the brother? The guy who I think so, yeah. And he seems to be, he doesn't have parties there. Keep like, he doesn't have, I don't think he has a presence there. I don't think he uses the house. Well, I think it's under um, extensive renovations. Yeah, I think so too. Mm -hmm. Like last time I saw like an overhead photo of it, like the the pool Mm -hmm. is drained, everything, the whole backyard is ripped up, the front yard is ripped ripped up, up. like there's no, the roof is off, like there's everything is just yeah like i must have seen crazy. the same one i don't even think the guest house was there anymore i want to say <gasps> yeah it looked like part of the guest house had been demolished from mm-hmm. like the last picture i saw because i know that I'm aviary so... was at one point and then yeah. when they were yeah. kind of like you know t- kind of trying to t- tie things up um but i think that part of the guest house too if not all of it it's definitely changed a lot the aviary was sad too because they took it out for parking. No, I think that's when they sold the house that I was at. Because remember, they used to use that house for parking. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, when they sold that house, yeah, they needed it for parking, I suppose. Do you that's miss too those bad days? The aviary was so cool. It was like a little jungle wonderland. Oh my gosh, it was oh so God, it was cool. So cool too. I love the little marmosets and feeding them mealworms. So cute. <laughs> so cute. Wait, which one? They had these Wait, little what? marm. I think they're called marmosets in the aviary, and they were in like this big cage towards the, um, towards the, the back of the aviary where security was, and they had a little the tamarind those, monkeys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Those little. Okay, okay. I was thinking of like a little mouse type oh, thing God. or something. I was like, wait, I don't remember yeah, those. Yeah, th- those ones. They're kind of a similar yeah, shape. They're small. They like hunch over and they have like the tails. <laughs> Do you think if it was still around and happening, you'd still be yeah, there? Probably. <laughs> I think, yeah, definitely. You know, maybe not all the time, obviously, but I definitely would 
go and play cards if that was if everyone was still around. I really enjoyed those moments. Yeah. Did you play cards at the mansion or at uh, Mary's house? Monday was was at Mary's. Tuesdays was at the mansion. <laughs> That's funny. So that's one thing they one kept thing. around was game night because we started yep. game night yep. on Tuesdays. Yep. It was, uh, yep. Well, I mean, Holly, I feel like I took that over with all my notes. Did you have anything else you wanted to ask or talk about? No, I meant to leave it to you. Oh, because I knew you had all the questions prepared. And so you guys knew each other better anyway. So I was like, yeah, we shared a room. No, I yeah, like your room looks similar. Is there anything, <laughs> Bridget? Yeah. Mine does? <laughs> the spooky? Yeah, and the pink. Yeah, I love it. Well, thanks for calling in. Thanks. Love you guys. Thank you so much. We're let's, excited. Let's get together yes, soon. Most definitely. Thanks, Bye, Crystal. Bye. Bye.